The Phaedo is Plato's account of the last day of Socrates' life. In the Phaedo, Socrates discourses on the topic of the immortality of the soul, which is appropriate given that Socrates is about to die. And so obviously the topic of what's going to happen to his soul after he dies is an important issue. And Socrates spends the last day of his life uh, discussing a philosophical problem uh, on the, the nature of the soul and what happens to it when uh, a person dies. The uh, Phaedo is actually the third pl uh, play or third uh, dialogue, not so much a play, third dialogue. It's the third dialogue uh, in a kind of a trilogy, beginning with the Apology. So you have three, three dialogues, the Apology, the Credo, and then the Phaedo. The Apology gives an account of Socrates' trial uh, before the Athenian court in which he was ultimately condemned to death on the charges of corrupting the youth and of impiety. The next dialogue is called the Credo, and that dialogue is the account of a discussion that Socrates has with Credo, one of his friends, on whether or not uh, he should escape prison or the jail in which he was held. Uh, Credo has come to Socrates and says, Socrates, you know, our, your friends, we've arranged for you to escape. You don't have to uh, drink the hemlock, the poisoned hemlock. You can escape and go to another city and you can live the rest of your life. The rest of your life. Uh, uh, outside of Athens. And so the Credo is concerned with whether Socrates uh, should accept the help that Credo is offering him. His ultimate answer is no, he should not. And the reason is because it would be unjust uh, because the city has rightfully, it's a democ Athens is a democracy, he had a fair trial. He was condemned to death. And Socrates thought that since it was a, a fair trial, he should accept the verdict, even though it was a, a bad verdict. But it was still, you know, uh, uh, conducted fairly. The Phaedo is the account of the last day of Socrates', Socrates life. And the two main people he's talking to is, is one person called Simeus and another person called Cebes. And the issue at stake is the immortality of the soul. What happens to the soul once a person dies? In this case, what's going to happen to Socrates' soul once Socrates dies? So Socrates, as a philosopher, uh, spends his final moments before he drinks the poisoned hemlock. At the end of the Phaedo, Socrates drinks the poisoned hemlock. Um, and so the Phaedo is the account of Socrates' final moments before he dies, before he drinks the poisoned hemlock. And appropriate for Socrates, he he dies very calmly. It's a very noble death, and he dis he dies doing what he loves to do, uh, discuss uh, philosophy. the The Phaedo is actually it's a very it's a great dialogue. I mean, all all if you've never read the Apology or the Credo and the Phaedo, you should read all of them. I mean, it's like if you haven't read Hamlet, you should read Hamlet. There are certain texts that you should read, uh, and three texts that you should definitely read at some time in your life are the Apology, the Credo, and the Phaedo. So I'm going to talk about the Phaedo uh, for a moment, or a few, mo a few moments. 
If you read the Fido, you will see on the sides of the pages, you will see numbers like 51A, 52C, 88C. You'll see numbers in the letter. These are called Stephanus numbers. And they are a way of, of uh, referring to uh, the Fido. If you, so if you have a passage, if you're quoting a certain passage in the Fido, you just look to see what the Stephanus number is, and then you write that down. So if the passage says 63C, then that's where it is, 63C. And that will be the same for all languages, whether it's German or French or, or Italian or whatever. I mean, Stephanus numbers go back to the 16th century by a person called Stephanus, who was a scholar and who um, edited the writings of Plato. And in his edition of Plato, he, uh, the pages in his uh, book, uh, that's, uh, that's where the Stephanus numbers come from. So it's re basically referring to the critical edition of the six in the 16th century uh, of Plato's works, edited by Stephanus, he, who is French. He was a French uh, scholar. Stephanus is actually the Latinized version of his name. They're called Stephanus numbers. So that's if you're reading uh, Plato and you see those numbers, that's what they are. It's a way of referring to the dialogue. So the, the, the Credo is, again, the main, the main theme of the Credo is the immortality of the soul. Socrates believes in the immortality of the soul. And in the Credo, he's going to offer four or five arguments uh, defending that position. In the course of his discussions, Simeus and Cebes, the two, his, his two friends with whom he is discussing the issue, they offer objections to and questions and obje questions and objections to what Socrates is saying. They want to be reassured or convinced that the soul is immortal. And so Socrates will give an argument, and usually they, they will listen to the argument, it sounds good, but then they won't really be totally happy with it, and they will, they will express their objections to it, and then Socrates will then respond with an answer. But, so, uh, in a different lecture, I will talk about, I'll get into the details, but for right now, I want to just kind of briefly introduce the, say some brief words about the dialogue. I've already said a few. Let me say a few more. The, uh, it's a dialogue. I mean, Socrates is not presenting his thoughts in a systematic way. He presents it in, in the form of a dialogue. And in fact, all of Plato's works are in the form of a dialogue. So Plato never sat down and wrote uh, a philosophical treatise in which he presents his ideas straightforward. He always presents his ideas in terms of a dialogue. So it's very difficult to know exactly what his own ideas are because he never tells you. It's like when you're reading Shakespeare, you read plays, right? So with Shakespeare, doesn't come out and say, this is what I believe. And when you're reading Plato, it's the same thing. Plato doesn't say, this is what I believe. He presents a dialogue in which characters interact. So the main character and also, also so, uh, most, just about every Platonic dialogue is Socrates. And again, it's not always clear exactly, you know, whether what Socrates says is really corresponds to what the historical Socrates really believed. The early dialogues, probably most of what Socrates says is probably what the historical Socrates believed. When you get into the later dialogues, like the Phaedo, for example, the, more of a middle dialogue, um, the ideas expressed by Socrates are probably not what the historical Socrates believed, but they're what Plato himself believed. Plato was a disciple of Socrates, and he loved Socrates. He considered Socrates the wisest and the bravest and the, the best of all men. Um, but he uh, learned from Socrates to think for himself and so, you know, some of the, as he, as Plato developed his philosophy, many of his ideas eventually diverged from what the historical Socrates 
would have said. So I think I'll, that's pretty much what I'll leave it at that. And in and, and, and the, and the next lecture, the next few lectures, I will develop some more themes about the Fido. The main thing about the Fido, again, is that the main theme of the Fido is the immortality of the soul. Is the soul immortal? Another big theme of the, uh, of, of the, uh, the Fido, another very important idea that's introduced and developed at somewhat of some length, is Plato's theory of the forms or the ideas, which is perhaps the single most important Platonic, uh, I, uh, Platonic doctrine. Plato believed that there are some are eternal, timeless, perfect, what he calls forms. For example, the form of justice, the form of the circle, the form of the straight line, the form of, of the good, the form of beauty, these for Plato were, were ontologically real. They were the ultimate, ultimately real things in the universe. They, they're called forms, with the capital F. Okay, the forms or the ideas with the capital I. And these ideas, for example, the idea of beauty, are only apprehended th through the mind or the soul. They're not apprehended through the senses. They're apprehended through reason itself. And reason, our reason or our soul is able to apprehend the forms. And for Socrates, for Plato, the whole, I, the whole quest, the philosophical endeavor, you might say, is to, is to uh, know the forms. And in, in a, some subsequent lectures, I will develop uh, that in more detail. I'm going to leave it at that for this lecture, and I will stop, and then I will continue in another lecture.